long before teenage superstars Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera exploded onto the entertainment scene, there was Tiffany. The singer, songwriter, and actress was the teen pop princess that every child who sang in front of their mirror with a hairbrush wanted to be. Born Tiffany Renee Darwish in the Los Angeles suburb of Norwalk, California, her origins stem from a mixed background, including Lebanese, Irish, and Native American roots. Before she celebrated her second birthday, Tiffany's parents would divorce, and she'd go on to live with her father. She launched herself into music by learning the words to Tanya Tucker's Delta Dawn at the tender age of four. By the age of nine, Tiffany was singing at the legendary Palomino Club in Northern Hollywood when she was spotted by country singer Hoyt Axton and his mother May, a talented songwriter herself. They encouraged her to head to Nashville, where she performed on a long-running local TV program. After he heard her demo tape, Tiffany signed a contract with her manager, George Tobin. That contract gave him total control over her career, a move that would later drive a wedge between Tiffany and her family. The seven-year deal called for a 50-50 split of record royalties after expenses, plus a 20% cut of all of Tiffany's non-royalty revenue, including money from concerts, personal appearances, merchandising, and endorsement deals. Early on in Tiffany's career, George would frequently be seen by her side during TV interviews, purporting himself to be her producer. He was, along with being her manager, her stylist, her songwriter, and arranger, and the director of her music videos. He was in charge of everything. He also famously encouraged her to seek legal emancipation from her mother and stepfather in a hugely public lawsuit when she was 17. This was rejected by the court, but the judge did allow her to move out of her mother's home and her grandmother became her temporary guardian. Years later, Tiffany would speak about her life before meeting George not being easy. Her mother was an alcoholic and her stepfather was very strict. She recalls after he recognized her musical talent, he pushed her into the spotlight as a small child. Of the legal battle with her family, Tiffany says she doesn't regret trying to break away from them, but she does regret the public nature of the case. At just 15, Tiffany released her self-titled debut album in September 1987. The first single, Danny, did not do well. Following its failure, she embarked on a nationwide tour of shopping malls to promote the album and generate a following. Her second single, a cover of Tommy James and the Shondells hit, I Think We're Alone Now, shot all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and remains her biggest hit to date. The Love Ballad Could Have Been became the project's third single and also rose to number one. This accomplishment put Tiffany in the record books for the youngest female artist to top the Billboard charts with a debut album. In late 1988, she released her second album, Hold an Old Friend's Hand. It was less successful than her first and didn't produce any number one hits. The album did receive positive reviews from critics though and immediately went platinum. This project would be the last collaboration, for a while, between Tiffany and George. Shortly after turning 18, she left his management. Inevitably, Tiffany's career suffered as musical tastes changed in the early 90s, moving away from dance and pop towards harder-edged rock and rap. Not surprisingly, some of her fans found the new soulful and sultry Tiffany that she debuted on her third album, The Urban Influence New Inside, less appealing than earlier work. A couple of years later, Tiffany walked down the aisle for the first time with makeup artist Bulmaro Garcia. Their only son was born that same year. They would divorce just over a decade later. During a brief early 90s comeback attempt, Tiffany reunited with her old manager, George Tobin, on her fourth album, Dreams Never Die. The reunion didn't last long and they shortly parted ways again before Tiffany moved to Nashville to develop her career as a songwriter and try her hand at becoming a country music artist. Tiffany kicked off the new millennium with a new body of work, her fifth studio album titled The Color of Silence. The reviews were very favorable and Billboard even described it as one of the best pop albums of the year. However, since it wasn't heavily promoted, it didn't achieve any commercial success. As they often did with Blast from the Past, Playboy reached out and Tiffany jumped at the chance to be featured in the popular men's lifestyle and entertainment magazine. She posed for the publication in April 2002. Years later, she would have no regrets and even admit that she would do it again in a heartbeat. So why did she do it? She told Billboard.com in 2015, more than about being naked, it was about being seen as a woman. As soon as I posed, we couldn't stop the phone from ringing. It worked. Tiffany gave marriage another try in 2004 when she connected with British businessman Ben George. Sadly, 14 years later, during the writing process of her latest album, 
2018's Pieces of Me, the couple mutually agreed to separate and have since divorced. Tiffany did a lot of experimenting and showcasing her talent in a variety of musical genres over the coming years by releasing dance, rock, and country influence projects. In May 2019, the mixtape tour, which Tiffany participated in, commenced in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was the perfect opportunity to showcase her updated rock version of her hit, I Think We're Alone Now, that was released the month before. Headlined by New Kids on the Block, other performers on the tour included Salt and Peppa, Naughty by Nature, and once assumed rival of Tiffany's, Debbie Gibson. In reality, the two chart toppers had no beef with each other whatsoever. Tiffany spoke to ET Canada in 2019 about just how wrong the press had been about their relationship. All that rivalry was not true. We really didn't know each other. We leave little notes here and there, see each other on carpets, but it was so fast. Now we have a friendship. The teen idols even appeared in a movie together, 2011's monster science fiction disaster film, Mega Python vs. Gatoroid. It was during filming that Tiffany and Debbie finally got a chance to spend time together, and they've kept in touch ever since. After more than 30 years in the game, Tiffany finally released her first original holiday music in 2020. She co-wrote and recorded the original song, Angels, in her home studio in Nashville. Frustrated at being unable to interact with her fans via the usual method of touring during the pandemic, Tiffany hit upon a novel alternative instead. She started a cooking club. Her monthly subscription, Let's Food with Tiffany, allows fans to join her at home and on the road as she prepares her favorite meals for herself and others. Every entertainer at some point in their career are going to have a bad moment or several on stage, right? But that doesn't mean that they would take it out on their fans. Well, Tiffany did just that in November 2021. While struggling through a live performance of her hit, I Think We're Alone Now, in Lake Park, Florida, she yelled an expletive at the crowd. Once media outlets picked up the story, her representative explained that she had lost her voice and was frustrated with her performance. Later, Tiffany herself addressed the event on Twitter. I panicked. It's not often that I lose my voice. And I got up there and just absolutely had a panic attack. And out of my frustration, I said things that I don't mean at all. I love you guys so very, very much. Over the years, Tiffany's tried a number of side hustles. She's done a bit of acting, opened a clothes shop in Nashville, and spent several years on the celebrity reality TV circuit, appearing on everything from Celebrity Wife Swap, Celebrity Cook-Off, Celebrity Fit Club, and Hulk Hogan's Celebrity Championship Wrestling. When asked in an interview with Fox News in 2019 how she was able to avoid the so-called child star curse, her answer was simple. I just think that for me, I always had that vision of my career. Plus, I was looked at as somebody teenagers looked up to and parents looked up to, so I had to be very careful. But definitely, I had people coming and exposing me to a lot of stuff. You go to parties, things are there, drugs, all kinds of stuff. But I took my career seriously. And when I had my son, that was it. My whole life changed. Today, her goal is to continue writing songs for herself and others, cementing her status in the industry as a powerhouse hitmaker and go-to songwriter. Tiffany's 11th studio album titled Shadows will be released in December 2022. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.